So now we're going to give you the spoilers for General Hospital, <clears throat> beginning with Monday, September 11th. Sonny's loved ones rally around him. Maxie briefs Felicia. Esme makes herself scarce. TJ and Molly make an announcement. And Spencer makes a romantic gesture. On Tuesday, Sonny makes a confession. We know it ain't going to be the real confession. But Gladys gets alarming news. Uh, which is probably, uh, you know, uh, Cody and Sasha escaping. Chase's curiosity is piqued. Liz realizes Jake is growing up. And Michael pays a surprise visit. So I guess this means Jake is about to get to talk. Because usually that's what, <laughs> when you realize your kid's growing up, it's because they're going to puberty. Wednesday. Maxie is confrontational. Dante and Sam put their heads together. Tracy refuses to budge. Jordan wants answers. And Carly grills Sonny. Thursday, Sasha is flabbergasted, which means she's surprised. Uh, Austin implores Ava. And are we really ready for Roger to change his character out? Because Austin, knowing that Nicholas was alive, makes him pure trash. It's already bad enough he has no chemistry with anybody, including Neva. But am I the only one that's ready to just, like, get rid of Austin? I'm not saying get rid of Roger. Uh, I'd rather than bring Todd Manning back. But, uh, you know, especially since they're bringing Blair back on Friday, I would love for Todd to, to show up and just get rid of Austin. But, you know, that's my fan wishful thinking. Ava, uh, I'm sorry, Dante voices his regret. Carly and Drew forge a plan. And Trina receives an offer she can't refuse. Friday, Martin gets an unwelcome sight. And that sight is going to be Blair. We're assuming that Blair is going to be his uh, ex-wife, the one he's probably getting out of money from. Cassie DePava said on it was Twitter or Instagram that her, it was Twitter, that her first air date would be September 15th. And then uh, September 18th, she's only on for two episodes, which is Friday and Monday. So Martin getting an unwelcome sight is most likely her. Spencer makes a request of Alexis. Carly gives Ava some unsolicited advice. And Trina and Jocelyn have a heart to heart. Anna confronts Valentine. We're finally, although probably won't be till the 18th, that we may get answers, may not get answers. So now I think one of the biggest things that happened uh, this week was Portia confronting Anna. And this caused a bunch of controversy because uh, there were fans upset that Portia went off on Anna. But I was happy to see it. I told uh, the members in the Zoom that I wasn't watching Young the Restless when uh, Victoria Rob was playing Drusilla, but I've seen cl clips of you know those those years, and I don't know if you think this the same way I thought this, but I felt like she was really having a Drusilla moment, you know, you know, sort of like telling it like it is and just like trying to put a chick in her place. And I love that for Portia because we don't get a lot of that from Black characters unless it's like Black characters going up against other Black characters like Portia and Jordan. But we don't really get a lot of, of mixtures, the shaking the table, rocking a boat uh, because of, you know, writers and producers thinking about imagery and, you know, how people might feel about certain things. But Anna is typically one of those characters that can't be touched, that's above board, um, no matter, you know, what Anna is doing, you know, is like lore, the holy grail of characters that can't get told off. And so it was interesting seeing Portia be able to tell Anna off um, from her point of view. She wasn't necessarily wrong. You know, she's just trying to protect her husband and her family and saying, you know, we're trying to get him 
on on the right path of healing and you know he's already in a bad headspace and seeing you's not going to make it any better it's just going to remind him even more about his situation how he got there and i'm paraphrasing but i don't know about you but i thought it was a cool scene i thought the two actresses did a great job and um it gave anna some food for thought but it also uh, push the story forward because it fueled Anna to want to know even more who the shooter was in Pikeman and everything. So I feel like this helped push the story forward. And one of my biggest gripes about General Hospital is that these stories be lingering for like two, three years. And it's like, come on, you know, wrap this up and let's tell the next story, you know, for the character. And the only other thing I want to talk about about General Hospital this week was I don't know if he's my least favorite character on the show right now. No, Gladys is my least favorite character. But I have been struggling since his introduction. I'm not a Cody fan. I don't hate the character like I hated Kiki, but I don't hate the character like I hate Gladys. <laughs> but he just doesn't feel like he fits on the show. It's like they're trying to put a, a round peg in a square hole. And they're I feel like they're just forcing Cody on us. And when I say us, I mean people like me who really don't feel like Cody fits. I know some people will like Cody just by the way he looks. but um, And I like the moment life to live. So it's not like I don't like the actor. Is really the character now. Um, the actor that plays Mac, he is taking a leave of absence. So, you know, he didn't say why he's taking a leave of absence. He said he'd explain it later. But to me, that just also means that you know, uh, Sam's about to find out that a Mac is Cody's dad. She's gonna encourage him to tell him that their father and son. But with um, with him leaving the show, you know, for a few weeks, yeah, we got a whole nother month <laughs> before that truth may come out, which will probably bring us close to November sweeps. But I, I the thing that got me with Cody this week, and I'm not going to rant about him any further, is them damn seatbelts. You're escaping from the hospital. Now, the car was just there. And I know he said, yeah, thanks, Sam. But I'm like, nobody noticed that there was a car that was clearly not in a parking spot just sitting there. I really felt like maybe Sam should have been there. Maybe she had smuggled on the phone and they had this whole escape plan out. I think that would have played out better. But the car just being there, um, not in a parking spot right at the exit. They didn't hire any extras to be like guards coming out after them. And the way he just carefully just, you know, put the seatbelt on or like, are you okay? As if they're not on a run. Are you okay? And then he goes and he carefully puts his seatbelt on. And I know that there are people out there that are trigger happy, trigger warning, happy about everything. And I'm like, Look, you're on the run. You put the seatbelts on while the car is moving because that would be a more realistic way to go because you're like running for not to get captured again. And you know the police are on their way because you didn't tie up the doctor. And that was my other gripe, gripe about the The doctor has been such uh, the type of character you want to get his comeuppance. That that little fight him and Cody had, I wanted Cody to beat his butt. You know, that would have made me like the character more. Jason would have gone in stone cold, you know, but Cody just kind of got a hit in. The doctor was getting too many hits in and then they were off camera. I didn't like that either. I didn't like the seatbelt situation. Um, And being a firefighter, a retired firefighter, where you're supposed to put your seatbelt on before the fire engine or fire truck, because uh, some people don't know it's two different things, uh, goes out of the station, 
no, we did not do that. <laughs> that gong go off. It's an emergency. You know, we got, we're supposed to like put our gear on outside of the fire engine on a fire truck, depending on what company you're detailed to. And then you get on, you put your seatbelt on, and then the drive's supposed to go. No. When that gong go off and there's a fire or somebody's in danger or something and, and you know the fire department need to get there when they need to get there, most of the time it's called turnout gear is what we wear. You know, I would have at least my, you know, half of my turnout gear on. And so that when that gong go off, all I had to do is put on my coat and jump on a pumper, you know, throw my helmet on and whatever, do whatever I got to do. But I say that to say that Nobody was putting their seatbelts on uh, when they first jump in. And the driver, as soon as everybody's in, go, 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 go. So I don't know. Maybe it's because and then we put our seatbelts on as the the engine or truck is moving. Uh, just some behind the scenes on what really happens in a, in a fire station um, when it's time to go to an emergency. So and nobody got hurt. Nobody got in an accident. You know, you might get bounced around a little bit uh, <laughs> when, when, you know, you're hitting the gas, getting out the station, but which is also something you're not supposed to do. But, you know, the person who who you're going to an emergency for, I'm sure they'll be very grateful for it that you got there, you know, ASAP. So anyway, I'm not a fan of Cody. I wasn't a fan of their escape scene. I didn't like the fight. I didn't like that they were wasting time with the seatbelts. They could have did that once they were in a car. Sasha could put her own seatbelt on. You know, anything. You know, she she was awoke enough to walk. She was, you know, awoke enough to do a little snap. You know, I, I would have even went for that more than, you know, him being so lovingly taking his time when you ain't got no time. So that's it. That's my little ranting for General Hospital. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.